the stream. Uh, today, of course, we're going to be playing some more um, some more automation and some more Beam and Gila Drive. I actually kind of want to start in Beam today. Because I don't really have that much of an idea of what I want to do in automation at the moment. Um, so yeah. And also I want to spice it up a little bit and when it comes to the when it comes to what sort of tracks I'm, I'm going on because um, recently I've really only been uh, um, using the automation track and you know occasionally the automation rally track so yeah let's jump into beam So where do we go? Let's go. East Coast default, maybe? I don't think I've ever been here. So let's see where that takes us. Oh yeah, um, I still don't know um, how to turn off the notifications uh, on Steam since the new, uh, since they uh, made the chat new. Um, excuse me. Okay, there we go. Uh, actually, I do think I recognize this. I may have been here before. And I want to drive this car a little bit, just to give it some time on screen. Some more than uh, it had yesterday, I guess. Yeah, uh, usually I think I've, on, I've always gone straight on there. This time I want to go. I want to go explore a little bit. Also, I changed the video quality back to 720p, but from what it looks on the on the stream, it hasn't really changed the way that the video looks. I also realized that apparently this has probably something to do with uh, BMNG because automation. Uh, I've done some test recordings of you know auto automation or or other games. With the same settings in OBS, and they're completely fine. So apparently, it's apparently there's something going on with, with Beam in that regard. And also, um, of course, one time I did uh, try streaming with Shadowplay, and it did the same thing. So it can't be on OBS's uh, end. And it would be. And it would be, uh, seem fairly unlikely that uh, both uh, that both OBS and Shadowplay would have the, the same issue. Ah, uh, yeah, this car is too low to go over uh, go over those. Let's go this 
this way. Yeah, I actually want to go that path. Like in here. Want to see what's there. Other than just death and destruction for me, I guess. Uh, well, what? Uh, okay. Can I get myself out of this? I don't think I can, can I? That's okay. Um, can you please spawn me on my wheels rather than on the, <laughs> rather than on the, uh, on, on, on the roof? Hey James, how's it going? off-road path that we could take which is why I'm not going as fast as I could here just looking for some more opportunities I guess still missed it though Well, I think I was a little bit too ambitious there. <laughs> Please camera point into the right direction. Thank you. Okay, now my brakes didn't work. And I can't actually... Yeah, I can't get out of there apparently. Okay, so the suspension is still fine apparently. I guess we hit, it, we hit that tree straight on so it shouldn't have taken much of a beating. Well, I want to go up there. See what's up there. I'm gonna respawn my car though. Right here. Can we go? No, we can't go over this, can we? No, we can't. We need a different car to do this. You know what? Okay. 
let's try going over that with this, which is just a dinosaur and probably way too large for this sort of narrow path. But can it go over this? Maybe with a little bit of a... Yeah, we got it. Can we get over this as well? We can. But now... Now what? Ah, oh, there's actually a corner there and it continues. Yeah, okay, well... Can you get up here? We can't. We can't get down or up. Okay, well... Ah... Uh, Uh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> let's go somewhere else, shall we? Small islands, sure. North Road. Let's see, what do we want to drive here? You know what, let's start off with this and if we, if there's anything in particular that would ask for a different car, we can always change. This, this road is also quite bumpy and uh, this car's stiff suspension isn't taking it very well. Subaru WRX uh, Impreza 05. Is that what this reminds you of? I mean, the, the wing does, surely. the sound a bit uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with the sound really the the the, the boxer 4 really is a more base bassy uh, uh, note more of a rough sound rather than this sort of high pitched and uh, in the top in the top range really like smooth sound after all my concept for a uh, 2020 Mitsubishi Evo so uh, you're not too far off I guess I think we may have completed a lap
like a like a good evo this doesn't have to work either <laughs> Australian by any chance because <laughs> like Holdens are a... whoa 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 okay Holdens aren't really particularly popular anywhere out outside of Australia I don't think they even exist in Europe These sort of things, uh, like Holden is, is actually really quite popular in Australia, isn't it? Whereas uh, here we really have like Opel, which is you know basically the German version of Vauxhall. Even like Chevrolets aren't particularly popular here. I mean, you do see them occasionally, but I don't think Holden even exists over here. And uh, apart from that, yeah, you know what else is 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 uh, ex like basically not not seen here at all? A Toyota Camry. I'm in America right now though, so I'm missing it. Uh, Holden is one of the best cars. Holden wins almost all races in Australia. Really? I didn't know they were so dominant in, in the races there. But yeah, here you you basically never uh, never see a Toyota Camry either. I'm, I'm in the Netherlands, but it was the same in uh, Austria as well, where I'm from. Basically, like Ford and uh, Ford and Chevy, really in, in America, right? And I guess to an extent, Ford and Opel in 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 the in in, in Middle Europe, where I'm where I'm uh, based, like they they aren't direct en enemies, but they are of course competitors, especially like the. The Astra versus the Ford Focus, or uh, the Corsa versus the uh, uh, versus the Ford Fiesta, the Opel Corsa, is, uh, Vauxhall Nova. So yeah, I guess I guess that makes sense. Mondeo versus Insignia. Ford I like is Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's a cool car. But as far as police cars go, I prefer the Dodge Charger.
bought one for five, $500 and the transmission is broke. I'm giving it to my brother though. Here I have my car, uh, uh, the transmission is broken. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I, I, I get where you're coming from, but at the same time, like, um, $500 is the sort of, it's the sort of budget where I personally wouldn't buy a car, not because I'm a snob, but because I wanted to, you know, work and, you know, get, get me a place as reliably. And for $500, like, e there's basically no car that, that can warrant that. You can get some decent cars for like two grand, three grand, but for five hundred dollars, like you gotta expect some issues. Can I get back on the road somewhere? I just got it to drive from one side of the state to uh, to the other. Really? Oh, yeah. I figured that wasn't the bush that we. That, that I could uh, go through. I haven't used it since. It, it was an awesome car though. Good handling, good gas, comfortable. Okay. I mean, a Crown Victoria. Good gas is, I guess good, can, good gas is one of those phrases that can be stretched a little bit and candid. something uh let's 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 go somewhere else shall we uh no nah. let's go to the handling circuit with this But I like the Commodore because it runs well. It's loud in some ways and has a lot of legroom. Yeah, I mean, lots of legroom. It's always good. Um, yeah, the last car I had was a 2006 BMW 5 Series. It was a, it was a three liter diesel machine and I chipped it from 230 to 300 horsepower. I had obviously a whole lot of torque as well, something like 450 pound feet. And um, yeah, it 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 was it was spacious more so than I uh, more so than I had considered. Especially the trunk was uh, really surprisingly large. And um, it because it was a diesel, it got good gas mileage. And with all that torque and power, it, it, it was f rather quick too. But of course, what it doesn't have is the sort of sound that you get from a V8, or even a natural, uh, or even a petrol uh, six-cylinder.
right now you're using a 2005 Volkswagen Jetta. That's fine. Not a bad car by any means. Probably not as much fun as the Commodore or the uh, or the Crown Victoria. But it should be fairly reliable and comfortable. The rear end of this car just won't get let go on tarmac, which is uh, I finally followed. Haha, I, f I forgot what. Oh, you you, you followed on on, t on Twitch. Uh, thank you. does not wanna wanna let go of the of the rear end uh, when you're driving on tarmac it's super sticky and uh, I guess that's one of the qualities of an of an evil right I mean it can drift especially when you see get to the more powerful versions but uh, I think the Commodore is a V8 I think so, yeah. Uh, but yeah, th th this being sort of an Evo inspired car, um, I think it does that. F it, it does the job of an Evo fairly well in that uh, it has a, as you can hear, a high revving four cylinder engine. It has four wheel drive, of course, a six speed manual transmission. Sharp handling, not really a whole lot of comfort. Oh shit, that corner is way tighter than I remember it. And uh, it, 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 it goes like stink when, uh, when, when you get into its power band. But below that, it has basically no torque. <laughs> Evo has similar strengths to Subarus. Yeah, it, it, like the the Evo and the WRX. Uh, have been rivals for many many years until Mitsubishi stopped making the Evo in 2016 and that is why my community challenge that took place yesterday was uh, if Mitsubishi were to make a, a, a new Evo in 2020 what would it be what would it be like and uh, this would be my idea if uh, you compare the torque and horsepower not too different at all I mean it I guess technically speaking if you make a 2 liter uh, 4 cylinder versus a 2 liter V6 versus a 2 liter V8 they all should make very similar power and torque figures the only difference of course is that uh, with the like the, the more uh, the more cylinders you have, the larger you can go in displacement without uh, completely, you know, ruining uh, the 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 in the uh, the internals, and uh, without also restricting to yourself to like 3,000 RPM. So you can make a five-liter um, V8, no problem, right? You can 
you can theoretically also make a five liter four cylinder but it won't like it won't last as long it won't be as smooth and it uh, and, and um, it won't be able to rev as high my brakes you will also rev higher with more cylinders that each piston will be lower in mass yeah what's my opinion on the, on the rotary engine um i can see why you would like it personally i'm 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 not a fan of the sound though so that's my principal issue with it and uh like in my opinion i just prefer for example the uh the sound of a of a of a straight six you know a bmw straight six for example i love that sound as a result if i were to buy a like buy like a car with around 200 horsepower i'd be more likely to buy a uh, like a bmw 330i or something than uh, a master rx8 you know they both have similar or in case of the e46 uh, 330i it would have the exact same amount of horsepower as the uh, as the master i think but i prefer the sound and uh, i also like the way that the e46 looks especially the coupe and that uh, as a result that would be my choice from two liter engine anyway uh, yeah indeed like if we're talking two liter engine uh, size and we're comparing say a, a four versus six versus eight cylinder uh, configuration they all should should be able to ref uh, at least to like 9000 rpm or whatever maybe 10 if you if you if you use high really high quality components sure a v8 might even ref uh, a little bit higher than that but but uh like overall the maximum power you can possibly get out of a two liter naturally aspirated engine is uh it's gonna be fairly similar in all cases Enjoy your coffee, Lucas. better monster or venom we don't get venom here so i guess the answer in in this case would be the monster where I do like and uh, where I do like consuming them it's um, it's always it's almost always a, a some or a, a, some uh, sort or another of monster like they have different uh, variations of it 
and I like not all of them but a couple different ones my favorite one is probably either the uh, the Valentino Rossi one or the the ultra red one uh, but I also like just the classic monster like the original and the Lewis Hamilton one is also pretty good in my opinion and uh, uh, the other sugar free one the white one I can't remember what it's called is it just called Ultra? But yeah, currently I'm on I'm, I'm in an off phase, so I at the moment I'm not really uh, drinking energy drinks. But in the future I might uh, enjoy them again. monster okay, yeah what's your opinion on red bull by the way because that is one of the one of the very few things that uh, actually was invented in austria where i'm from and is actually known worldwide <laughs> like that and i guess schnitzel to some extent is something that uh, that <laughs> is austrian and uh, people actually know it also in other countries you love red ball personally i'm like the classic red ball i'm not a fan of some of the like um different editions of it like the the one with blueberry i think was relatively good and the one with um what was it tangerine or something that one i also liked reasonably well Yeah, but the glass red ball is... I don't like the taste, it's just... Makes me over-hyper. <laughs> yeah. Like... The taste of the classic red ball is just... Not too great, I have to, I have to say. And especially, you know... Obviously, growing up like 15 or whatever i had a phase where i was like everything has to be sugar-free and i tried sugar-free red bull and it was terrible <laughs> like never tried that again afterwards drink uh, I get Mountain Dew to kickstart oh okay Mountain Dew huh uh, I've tried that as well it's uh, it's also it's also pretty good never had Monster or Red Bull or even heard of Venom I enjoy a good Sprite Sprite I haven't really had it in years man I, uh, to the point where I think the last time I had it was when I was like 11 so I don't even fully remember the taste. It's just one of those things where it's like, hey, it's a it's a lemon soda. There's a billion other ones out there. soda is popular anywhere else but recently i've been enjoying fernandez is that is that something that's regional in holland maybe or is that because i haven't seen it in austria or does that exist outside of the netherlands i do have a bottle of 
with uh, Seven Up in it. Yeah, it's just like Sprite or Seven Up. Like, please don't get offended by this, but uh, they're they're like two of the same thing, really. Like Sprite and Seven Up is basically like. It's, it's almost like cola and Pepsi, uh, and the difference being that I can actually tell the difference between the cola and the pe Pepsi when when it comes to it. But uh, when it comes to the taste, but Sprite and Seven Up is just like it's the same thing. <laughs> But yeah, is is Fernandez a a, a popular uh, soda brand anywhere else? Like they have uh, they have the Fernandez Green Punch and Pineapple Punch and uh, there's a there's like a red, a blue, you know, whatever different colors. Mellow yellow, yeah. that drink yeah. so it, it could just be a regional thing then could just be a, a Dutch thing here completely possible What's your favorite type of Fanta, by the way? Are you like the? Uh, are you more? Uh, are you liking more like the the classic, you know, orange Fanta or like the Fanta lemon, Fanta Cassie, Fanta exotic, whatever? Please don't understeer into oblivion. Thank you. For me, coffee is above all. I mean, yeah, I, I, I did also go through a phase where I, I had coffee, like, not just one coffee, but like several coffees every day. But uh, it started to get expensive because my favorite uh, coffee is the one I would get from Starbucks. So uh, you, you can see why, why that would get expensive quite quickly, right? Here in the States, it's really just orange and... Okay. I prefer orange, but neither are my favorite. Okay. Uh, let's actually uh, jump into a different car. Should we go to automation? Any ideas of what we would build in automation? something from the early 80s like more of a, uh, a family sedan or or a sports car or like a, a, a an early 80s truck or something or I don't know Put a ton of modern uh, designs. How about an old school interpretation of a modern um, 
Dor design, maybe an E30 rival. Have, have an uh, even economical car version, but also a much more powerful sporty version like an M3. I could do that, yeah. Man, this engine sounds so good. That's the beauty of a naturally aspirated V12. And especially when it's 7.5 liters, you get endless torque. Enough to uh, understeer enough in order to hit that barrier, of course. But enough for a lot more too. So we're gonna go through this corner at like 2000 RPM in fourth gear and watch the speed on now, if I could get this thing straight. Because we did damage some of the suspension, so I'm gonna have to reset. I really like the old school Formula One cars. Have you built a V16 yet? For, a V16 yet for Beam? Uh, I have imported the uh, V16 uh, GT that I drove in, uh, I believe, the first or sec, for first and or second video of uh, driving in Beam. The one that's like 800 horsepower and uh, completely undrivable while, while because it spins its wheels in fourth gear at 140 miles an hour. But apart from that, uh, I don't think I've, I've built a V16 yet for Beam. Is there a uh, is there a uh, a track anywhere in uh, within the beam files that uh, has a really really long straight where you could actually uh, take cars to their uh, to their top speed apart from like the grid the empty grid. Oh shit. Yeah, that's a mid-engine 90 supercar for you. Overstep it just a little bit and it's gonna spin. Admittedly this is 99. So it's kind of like a... Endless highway is like a popular mod for that, okay? But the way this accelerates on this uh, uphill, uh, uphill straight after the fast left-hander is just, it's just a great demonstration of all that torque that this engine has. This has. I plan on taking my uh, Commodore to the high, uh, to the highway to hell. <laughs> is that is that like? Do you actually have a highway um, near you that would that has the nickname Highway to Hell? Is that a real thing? Let's head over to automation.
I'll put this screen up while automation is going to be loading. We do have a highway to hell. It's multiple roads. They have uh, put speed limits on the road except for one. So one of them doesn't have a speed limit. They call, they're called that because of how many people fall asleep at the wheel. Oh shit. Um, well, that's... I mean, that's, that falling asleep at the wheel is obviously like extremely dangerous and you should you know try to avoid it but uh oftentimes like falling asleep even for a for a couple of seconds is uh, like nearly unavoidable like for, for example if you if you really have to get home but you're you're already tired but uh but um uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, the the more controllable thing that leads to a lot of accidents that you can more easily avoid would be texting while driving. Like I'm uh, I'm 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 really like I'm I'm really like stunned by how how stupid um um people are to do texting and driving at the same time. Like it's it's. Just why? Why would you do that? Like, the road is so long that it hypnotizes people and makes them fall asleep. Then they hit the red dirt and flip over, possibly dying. Shit. Um. That sounds like really dangerous, actually. Does this have a sedan version? Because I don't, don't really want to use this. Does that have a sedan version, maybe? Uh, it does. What's the difference between this and this? I don't know. Wow, there's a lot of versions of that. I think I wanna, yeah, I think I wanna do this. One is also one is two door, the other one on the right has four. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, then it's this one should be called coupe instead, but well whatever. Um eighty two, let's make it for corrosion resistant steel and the monocoque. Launch two gun because we're going up against the free series. And then McPherson's and I guess uh semi trailing arm. Cause I believe that's how the E30 was set up as well. And the E30 is actually a great handling car. Two doors to dance, bro. So let's let's make the base version first, shall we? I'll make a I'll make like a base version, I'll make a middle version and I'll make a sport version. So the base version is gonna have a uh an N94. It's gonna have A single overhead cam design, I think. It's gonna have like a 1.8 liter. Actually, let's give it aluminium heads. Cast, cast, cast. Let's see if we need more than that. We shouldn't need more than 40 cam profile. It's 82, so let's go carburetors. Two barrel.
it's 82 and most cars don't have a cat so let's go reverse flow straight through okay the engine is knocking Eighty-three horsepower, sure, it seems fine. Maybe we can get like eighty-five. Or what is this looking at? Eighty-seven. Okay. Yeah, eighty-seven is fine. Uh, that's two doors. That's four doors. I want to make it smaller. And do I want to maybe... Do I want the plastic bumpers or do I not want them? Depends on whether or not I can place fixture on the, on the plastic, I guess. That sort of red was a pretty popular choice with uh, with BMW E30s, wasn't it? Let's keep that. And then headlights. Um, hi. hi Firebird02, how's it going? And give it the most powerful, most obnoxious engine ever. Cats were mandatory in the US starting in 75. And people wonder why American cars from 70s had garbage power ratings. Should give it a ho hood scoop. I guess not the base version though. The sport version will probably have one. But like the the low end, like 87 horsepower, 4 cylinder is probably not going to get one. Um, I think square is the way to go here, right? It's the 80s after all. And while the um, the E30 obviously had uh, dual uh, round headlights, um, I feel like this one is gonna have, oh, I can't place fixtures here. Yeah, this one's gonna have rectangular ones. Let's go with something like this, maybe. Uh, maybe not, actually, because it gets everything messed up. Does this work? Yeah, that works. Uh, what's the difference between this and this? Oh, this has like a this has like a black line up here. I see. I gotta get, get myself a classic muscle car with a triple intake on the top, yeah. Yeah, sadly we don't have like superchargers in, in the game yet. That would be a lot of fun if we did. I guess that's all the cooling that this is really gonna need with the four cylinder. Sure, that one can get the eco. Number plate, even though it's not going to be, you know, very economical because this is the 80s. Yeah, but the, uh, I, g I guess the reason uh, how do we make a car not just start going to one side at 122, 130 miles an hour? Uh, downforce is the answer there. Actual, like, positive downforce. 
Yeah, like you, you can you can increase the you can add one lip uh, on either side uh, on either end of the car and uh, max the sliders out. It might it might still make lift. So like minus whatever kilograms of downforce indicated by the game. But if your car actually makes like positive downforce, as in like you know fifty point whatever kilograms of uh, downforce. Even though it has like 100 pounds of downforce. Oh, interesting. Um, then I would suggest maybe increasing the, uh, the, the, the rear tire width because it may actually be wheel spin rather than just uh, lack of uh, downforce. I think these door handles suit this car pretty well. We're also going to add a badge here. Which is better, supercharger or turbocharger? Um, I like both. And in fact, my answer would be like twin charging, <laughs> but um, seeing as that's a very complicated and expensive thing to set up, um, if you can only have one, I guess turbochargers. I don't really want these here. I want more something like maybe I just want two of these, but in like red, and then have the indicators sit on here just like they are in the front. This, this, this car is going to be very square, <laughs> like all around. Do that. Also, these, these shouldn't like extend past the the corner here because it's the 80s um another batch back here and i'll put the normal plate on the bumper Yeah, I don't know. This 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 car body doesn't like number plates apparently. And we need an exhaust. Yeah, I think You know what's good? Chips. This, this amusing makes me want to rave. Uh, chips as in like potato chips or... In, in, in which case I would uh, agree, yeah, that they're, they're, they're pretty good. Not, you know, good for you. <laughs> I think that that much should be pretty obvious. It's not, not the best thing you could be eating, health-wise, but... Um, 
they're, they're, they taste good for sure, yeah. Uh, what kind of wheels do we want on this side? Something in this, maybe? Chips as in Pringles, yeah. Or Cheetos, yeah, yeah, okay. It is mid trend. Okay. So with the mid engine car, yeah, you really gotta, um, you really gotta have the front tires be a lot, le a lot narrower than the rears. Um, yeah, it's just gonna rock an open diff. Hard long knife road tires, and I guess this is gonna get like 175s. Nothing too fancy. Um, chips are good for your soul, not for your health. I I feel I I feel like that sort of niche for me personally is filled by chocolate. <laughs> like, I I prefer chocolate to chips when it comes to food for a soul rather than for health. Um. But that might just be me. Chocolate is amazing, yeah. I really like chocolate ice cream. I mean, yeah, like... You know what? Ben and Jerry's. While we're on the topic of sort of chocolate and also ice cream, Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> I've, I've, because, you know, where I was from in in Austria, they don't have Ben and Jerry's. So recently, I've been introduced to the world of uh, to the world of it, and it's great. Neapolitan, yeah, I guess that's that's another thing that's sort of Austrian, like the 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 Mannerschnitten, as it's called here, Neapoli Neapolitan. Neapolitano. Um, uh, we are gonna give this thing progressive springs, gas monotube. tube, and we're gonna give this a more comfortable setup. Which means it's gonna roll a lot more. Yeah, 240 millimeter right height is fine. We could really reduce the max ref, uh, the max RPM to 6,000, and it'll sp still be fine. Uh, let's check out the gearing. Uh, this will actually do 100 miles an hour. My childhood faith ice cream was just mint. I don't think I ever had mint ice cream if I, uh, at least not that I would remember. But yeah, until I recently discovered uh, Ben and Jerry's, I've never really been a I've never really been that much into ice cream. I guess let's do this, right? Yeah. And then that'll be... I've always liked vanilla cherry is also quite good. Yeah, um, I've always liked, you know, sort of like the, the, the more fruity ones like peach or, or, or uh, melon or... So like stuff like that, like watermelon ice cream. I, I I've, I've been to one place that I remember being in my childhood. Uh, that uh, where I had watermelon ice cream and it was freaking amazing. Yeah. Uh. So that would be beam drive. Uh, let's 
let's just call this the S3, SDN three zeros, I guess. <laughs> It'll be the S318, I guess. Yeah, chocolate chip cookie though. I mean, here's the thing. Austria in most places, like especially in the more rural areas, like where I'm from, is like a very traditional country. Like most places aren't really open for a lot of like novelty, such as, you know, fancy, uh, um, f fancy, uh, sorts of ice cream like chocolate chocolate chip cookie dough you, you'll never see that uh, in the rural area of uh, of austria you get like chocolate you know vanilla r uh, strawberry and you know the classic flavors even in even in uh, the towns it's like yeah you get maybe like some some more uh you get like a red bull flavored uh, ice cream you get you know uh potentially like as i said like watermelon or something like that but chocolate chip cookie dough like anything that ha has like actual material in it is uh, pretty rare in uh, to get in austria sure there are some um ice cream salons that uh, that are way more expensive than the average ice cream uh, dealer and they d could have them but um apart from that it's just like you know strawberry <laughs> vanilla chocolate Lemon, maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess as a base version, this would this uh, this would suffice. It's actually pretty light, 996 kilograms, which would be, which is fair considering that this would be going up against the E30, which was also quite light. Uh, this goes 166 kilometers an hour, which is fine. What about ice cream sandwiches? Never had one of those in my entire life. It's not really a thing in Austria either, and I haven't really been actively looking for it here in the Netherlands. Although if I if I had been, I, I I'm pretty sure I would have found it somewhere. Yeah, so this takes almost three minutes to go around the automation track. Also, the weight distribution is just awful. Holy cow. I can't imagine how this is gonna be when... Uh, can't imagine when, uh, how this is gonna be when we add a bigger engine. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm concerned about that. I thought that with with this uh, with this uh, engine being so small, we might get uh, somewhat close to 50-50, but 57-43 is it's pretty alarming for for the base version. It should really be closer to 50-50. If we add a diff, maybe. Actually, it doesn't do anything. Uh, anyway, maybe should we go like inline four, inline five, inline six, rather than inline four, inline six, V eight for the for the free um, for the free versions of this car? I think that would be cool. Now that we have the option of uh, building inline fives. Choosing to also clone the engine variant will then allow the 
No, only the trim. I still not put in an info. Yes. Dang, I gotta go for a while and I need to get ready for the day. Okay. Thanks for stopping by, Lucas. Enjoy your day. Also, how, how has the weather been in the past couple of days for you guys? Because here it's been freaking blazing. Like, I, 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 came, I came to the Netherlands expecting, you know, what people told me. And that was that, you know, the weather is kind of cool and mild and you know it's not it's not particularly hot in summer and uh and and, and uh, it's also not super cold in winter fine other than a storm like here we've had like in about 32 degrees uh, and sunny since yeah i mean considering how far north the netherlands is i mean it's not it's it's not scandinavia but um apart from scandinavia is is one of the more northern countries in europe um and and uh we've had 35 36 degrees the last three days or so today it's been raining a little bit so it has come it has cooled down slightly but it's still very very warm and humid most most importantly to point out there because you have to realize that uh, you know the majority of the netherlands uh, is actually below sea level so the air here is uh, generally more humid than in you know other places on earth and combine that with 36 degrees it's Oh man, you just die when when you're outside. Kind of want this, go this, give this a twin carburetor, and then also run this on ninety-one run, and then like sixty-three hundred RPM or something. No cat to press for straight through, I guess. That's 128 horsepower. We can get a little bit more, 134. That seems like a reasonable upgrade, right? from the 87 in the in the baseline version and again we can get this down to 6000 rpm i would like 200 newton meters just because it's a round number uh, no can't get it Can't do that. 199, 200. Okay, there we go. Nice curve, too. Uh -huh. I guess the inline 5 could have. Maybe a second exhaust. Now just one larger one. There we go. Other than that, other than that, I don't think I want to change too much. Aesthetically, because it's still not, you know, a particularly uh, high-performance car. The car. Uh, get to 120 then it feels like it is on ice even after I changed to have almost 200 pounds of downforce at 120 miles an hour mm. what sort of uh, front front tire width are, are you running 
because mid-engine cars do do tend to not like uh, particularly wide front tires. Uh, what capacity are we running here? 2.5 liter. I think I want more like 2.2. Then again, we are we are at. Uh, 200 new meters which is nice i guess we can do it with a little bit less hundred and twenty horsepower hundred and seventy five new meters yeah sure Also seems like a fine upgrade from the 1.8 liter in 4. Already 59.41 in terms of the uh, weight distribution. This does uh, have a higher top speed here. Nine point four seconds now, I guess. Let's give this like one eighty five, shall we? You're running 355 front and 395 rear. Well, yeah, you gotta you gotta reduce the width of those 355s then. Going down to like, I mean, the 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 reference car that I had for my 90 supercar challenge had 385s uh, on the rear with the Murcielago body, and then 285s on the front, and even that feels kind of too much uh, um, in beam. Beam drive, uh, two point two, uh, fifteen valve. Gonna be uh, no problem. I'm gonna be curious to like I'm curious as to how this will sound in beam as well. Don't think I've ha had like a low revving in line five yet. S322. And then we're gonna build our our inland six version. Which I believe will uh, will only have like a two point five or something, but a slightly more aggressive setup so that it will actually make a decent amount more power. Sorry for that uh like my chair is getting sort of getting kinda squeaky um well we're gonna go to this tab here and make a new engine it's gonna be in an six we're gonna make this one from aluminium because we are gonna be going up against an m3 this doesn't fit huh
Or do it, or does it just say that now? And it will actually fit once we put it in. And that is going to be a four bar of bus surrender setup. Aluminium. It's going to have forged internals. Someone like 55 here. I put it down to 210 front and 265 rear. Okay. I think I want fuel injection here, right? And premium gas. Long to really headers, no cat. I like the what was what what I was gonna say earlier is um yeah um what was it in nineteen seventy what was it seventy five cats were mandatory in the U S that is cor uh, th that that might be correct I mean I don't know it for sure but um. You gotta consider that the average American car had what? A 3.8 liter V6? Maybe even a V8? The average car in Europe at that time had like a four cylinder engine. That's a lot less emissions naturally. And uh, as a result, we were able to uh, apparently with fuel injection um, get around not having a cat. Uh, for a little bit longer than uh, you would in the US. Hundred and eighty horsepower. Is Oh, it, it actually doesn't fit, huh? Hmm. It's just too long. Hmm. How small does the bore have to be? Okay, that fits. Can you make this sort of bore work with 2.5? Not quite, I guess. Uh, some. What is this gray box? Okay, uh, that's a bug report. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll give you this screen while I reboot automation. Just so you don't have a black screen. The difference really was that you didn't have cities like Los Angeles with millions of cars driving every day causing smog. That is also a good point, but we did of course have major cities already. That's, uh, that's what cats were really in there for and not really so much emissions as desmogging. Oh, it, it didn't save. Oh, it, it, it did. Uh, let's check here. There's actually a better weight distribution, apparently. So, probably because a decent part of the engine is, act is actually behind the. Front axle. 
This is better weight distribution than in 9.5. That's interesting. Um, let's see, though. We do want... Wow, how is the piston the, the uh, limiting factor here? Maybe we do want to just revise the inline 5 then, or make this sort of a little bit more like a 2.4. Now the piston is a little bit happier with, with this. Uh, now it's too big again. V6, we could do that, but that's not really a, a European thing in the 80s, is it? Over-engineering is, though, <laughs> to be completely fair. And I guess, like, the... The M3 obviously wouldn't have like completely average uh, components either. Like, they'd have better exhaust, better fuel system, better valves than the average car, of course. So I guess a little bit of quality here and there is uh, justifiable. Still can't really take the revs. Huh. 180 horsepower is not where I'd like to be when going up against an M3, though. That's too large. not gonna give me more horsepower by doing this no I guess a performance intake could be warranted as well 185 horsepower that is close enough I think this might actually be a little bit lighter than the m3 anyway But now we gotta take care of the aesthetics as well. So, first of all, we're gonna add. Some vents here. And the hood scoop. And I believe some of these would be kind of fitting as well. This definitely does need a wing on the back. Uh, but what sort of wing are we gonna go for? This? Yeah, I think this is like subtle enough.
If you do it like this though, you can't open the trunk, so... Let's do it like that. And this is gonna get dual exhaust. And also, uh, like... Excuse me, there we go. These ones. Looks awesome with that wing, thank you. Uh, still, does it does it with uh, 195 front and 275 rear? Yeah, that that's about the sort of uh, wheel wheel uh, like tire width that you would you would uh, use on on a mid-engined car. Uh, what do we call this though? If the bay, if if the series is called the S3, what do we call this? And don't say RS3. <laughs> S3-R, I guess. S5? Uh, I don't know how you... I don't know why it would be called the S5. Actually, neither of our car, like none of our cars have an antenna or a fuel cap yet. So let's add those. And an antenna, because these, these are gonna have a radio, of course. Should you also add the front lip? I, th I guess so, right? While well, we're at it. Yeah. Let's see what the downforce says here. Let's give this a fully clad on the tray. Should we give this a limited slip diff? I think we should. Yeah. Watch that drivability go from 26 uh, oh, from 27.6 to 34.1. Family sport is at 64.9. Yeah, that that is definitely the way to go. Also, we should give it a five speed instead. In sports tires. And then also, uh, I guess 205s front and rear, right? Oh, we can't. Can I? Yeah, I can flare the wheel arches. Fifteen inch rims. Brakes, it would get bigger ones, of course. How 
over the brake uh, bias. Over towards the front. Okay. Okay, that was pretty much a sweet spot there. Uh, sure. Sure. And then this is gonna have a, a sharper suspension setup. lower uh, sure Let's see what that does 6.5 seconds that is certainly not too far behind uh, the actual m3 e30 I don't remember by heart how quickly the e30 did it but it was something along the, these lines. sound of the N16. 228 is actually not too bad for having only 185 horsepower. Should we give this different wheels as well? I, I suppose so, right? Uh, something like that, maybe. And then like Something like this. Nah, doesn't look too good. Maybe if we do like that. Nah, let's just leave this off. Should we also give this a different color? Nah, don't like that at all. Also, why did that not paint the pillar as well? No, oh, that's too modern. No. Gray? Nah. Gray is more average than red, isn't it? Like for, for like... No, we wanted the... Uh... Yeah, there we go. Um, window trim, I suppose we would make chrome, right? Or also plastic? Yeah, okay, fine. And the pillar? Ah, that can be body color, okay, fine. All right, um, now I'm quickly gonna add a fuel cap and an, and an antenna also to the other two versions, because I forgot about that. Uh, 
Ah. Ah. Also, yeah, theoretically, I should change the econ number plate on the on on the um, on the R version for a sport or whatever. But do we really have to get that uh, nitpicky about it? I don't think we do. Was able to suppress the sneeze somewhat. I can feel it coming back. Uh, yeah, let's export all three of these. Okay, there's one. Also pretty good how the Inland 6 version has the same drivability stat as uh, the other two, despite having quite a bit more power. But uh, I've seen quite a few times that uh, the automation stats don't necessarily always translate um, into what they feel like in Beam, especially when it comes to the drivability. Like for example, the this car, the my Evo concept has a drivability of 59, right? It it feels like the easiest car to drive ever in Beam. Whereas uh, this car, the the Eagle Sport 8 has a drivability of 58.7, which is basically 59. And it's like the least drivable car ever in Beam. So yeah, uh, let's. Speaking of Beam, so let's switch over. I'm gonna give you this screen while I'm gonna uh, fire up um, the game. Windows making itself uh, noticeable once again. Uh, Beam and G. And yeah, let's go to the automation test track, see what they feel like. Of course, we're working without ESC here, because, you know, it's the 80s. open death life <laughs> mm. but I have to say this card doesn't actually feel awful like uh, and I guess the big reason for that is because it's light did just spin an 87 horsepower car though with an open diff have you been getting that gray box for the up for the update what do you mean
what gray box are you referring to? for this flat out yeah pretty sure we can 96 95 going slightly uphill now we're losing a, a speed Sixty-two, seventy. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, that that Windows uh, thingy was kind of telling me that uh, the application may appear blurry. Now, for me, it looks perfectly smooth. But I can see on the stream preview that for you guys it looks kind of kind of blurry. But that is only the case in uh, in in um, Beam. And I and I think that early nineties S class rival next. Maybe I don't know. Um, we can do that tomorrow actually. Um, and yeah, it, it's only the case in Beam, not for automation or any other game I've tried that just really seems to be something about beam that uh, Windows really doesn't like and uh, I've seen also that uh, on Condotra's stream of beam and G it was it was the exact same thing and also looked kind of blurry in the stream um, and just like for me and uh, also I tried um, Using a different streaming program, uh, Shadowplay, rather than uh, rather than uh, OBS, it was the exact same though. So it can't be the streaming software, and it can't be my PC. Otherwise, it wouldn't. First of all, it wouldn't look smooth in game, and uh, also it wouldn't look uh, just exactly the same on somebody else's stream. And uh, therefore, I think the only the only option left is that it's actually, well, just, just beam. Do realize, of course, that um, this is still technically in alpha. Um, but beam has been around for quite a few years now. Like, it is still in alpha. Like, that tells you that apparently the devs have really big plans for this. Uh, does it only happen when streaming? When streaming or recording, yeah. Like, on my end, I, I can see a clear difference in video quality between, you know, my gameplay on one monitor and the stream on the second monitor. I can see a clear difference. And what that tells me is, uh, like I said, considering the fact that it, that it looked the same on somebody else's stream, there must be something going wrong with... Like something in the way that the uh, gameplay is encoded when recording uh, is uh, is not right. But uh, again, I've tried a different software and it did the same thing. So I might actually report that to. Uh, to the beam devs and or or at least ask what's what's going on like the fact that i can see a clear difference in video quality between my own gameplay and uh, the stream is is uh, a clear indicator that uh, something goes wrong uh, through through the middle of that and it 
can't be the recording software because I, I've, I've changed that and it still does the same thing. Well, whatever, let's get, get on with our lives. This car is fairly easy to drive. Which it should be because it's slow. But you have seen me spin twice in that uh, tight chicane, uh, in that tight uh, hairpin. Which I don't really understand how that can even happen. It's the compression. Yeah, probably. But I've done test recordings like into um, into uh, oh actually you mean the compression on Twitch's side, so that uh, it can so that it uh, can um, like transfer the video more more quickly and uh, at the same FPS that I'm recording. And also so that the video doesn't have like a trillion gigabytes. <laughs> well, this engine is pretty muted. And the car does feel slightly faster than the previous one but of course not a lot the one tire fire This car still feels really easy to drive. Um, slightly faster than the previous one. But uh, the handling is very much the same. I mean, I guess the handling should be very much the same when the suspension is like exactly like a direct copy and the tires are 10 millimeters wider, uh, uh, 10 millimeters wider on either end. I, I, I don't understand why it does that though we did give it ABS didn't we not entirely sure on that I think we did let's try hard braking and see if the ABS uh, lights up well hard braking from whatever speed we can actually achieve here we damage some part of the suspension okay no ABS that explains it but I'm really gonna be curious uh, how the how the other one feels the the R version because that is the one that would be going up against an E30 M3 Yeah, we did damage something on the suspension, but we're almost at the finish line, so I don't want to reset again. It takes too long. Could could the compression have a? Could that have something to do with my with my graphics card? Maybe requiring maybe an up uh, an, an update. As in like a hardware update because it is an nvidia gtx 970 which is like four years old and it's running in beam at like 97 percent or whatever so it is getting uh it is getting stressed quite a bit while playing this game Oh, this is 
this uh, this likes kicking the tail out for sure. Because uh, when because the graphics card might not be able to render fast enough in order to in order to uh, carry the, the same image quality that I get on my end over to the recording and that might be uh, why, 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 why it is the way it is. Have you tried it at lower settings? Not yet, but uh, I mean I could. I mean it's a GTX 970. It's performance-wise, it's about on par with the uh, GTX 1060, and that should be completely fine, right? Like people do gaming with the with the 1050 Ti and the 970 is quite significantly faster than that, and so is the 1060, of course. Like the 1060 and the 970 are pretty much equal in terms of performance, and the 1060 is what I would consider to be a good gaming card. Should be good enough for Beam anyway. Again, I uh, I do want to wait for the next generation of Nvidia uh, cards to come out, which should happen actually from now on, within like a month or so. And uh, I'm gonna grab one, and from there, you know, we'll see uh, how how much. Uh, We'll see how much that improves things. This can actually get up to reasonable speeds among, uh, along the straight here. has come down. Uh, DDR4 will probably come down once DDR5 is out, which should happen relatively soon as well. But I can't. But of course, I, I'm not a, I'm not a prophet. I can't guarantee that DDR4 is going to get cheaper. Maybe it's going to get even more expensive because people are going to be like, no, DDR4 has been fine, and DDR5 is way too expensive. I'm buying DDR4 instead, and that might increase the demand uh, compared to what they were expecting and uh, therefore drive the uh, prices up even further. I don't know.
but yeah, this car, this car drives well. Sounds good too, in my opinion. Well, yeah, there I went onto the front a little bit too early. That was entirely on me, but. Yeah, so I guess I'm gonna uh, wrap it up here. Uh, it's gonna. It, it's been a good stream. We've we've actually built a pretty nice car here with this sort of uh, 1982, I believe, M3 rivalry. Although technically the M3, I think, came out a little bit later, but. But yeah, um, it's been fun. I'll be streaming again tomorrow, uh, starting at uh, 4 p.m. GMT, which is the same time I started uh, today. Nice drift. And uh, I hope to see you there. We are also getting pretty damn close to getting that um, Twitch affiliate uh, status which would uh, allow me to receive uh, bits and donations this is of course not something that i'm gonna that i'm gonna ask anyone to do like that's completely voluntary you don't have to give me money just for you know playing video games <laughs> um but but yeah that is a status that i might achieve tomorrow if we get at least three viewers we can do that right three viewers it's possible and I would be very thankful if you would uh, help me achieve that status. And, uh, and yeah, hope to see you tomorrow. Have a good rest of your day. And goodbye.